Good morning, Stampers. This is Teppi Schwartzel with AridDesertDesigns.com, and I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I am coming to you today with um, a blog hop, and our group is going to be doing the All Dressed Up Video Collaboration Hop. Now, what we're focusing on with this particular blog hop is the Best Dressed Bundle. And um, not, not necessarily the bundle. We're um, looking at doing the, uh, the purse, the purse die. So, um, and it's quite a process to try and design some of these things. What I've done today is um, we are using the all dressed up dies and we're using the purse die. This is it. This is the top. And then I also used the strap. Okay. <clears throat> now, excuse me. It's allergy season here in Arizona. So I've cut most of these things out so that I didn't have to take up all of your time. But I've also used the here's a card. And the sentiment that I used was um, thank you for being my friend. And I've also used these gorgeous dies, and they are from the Ornate Borders dies. <clears throat> and this is the die that I will be using for the purse, or on the purse as a design. So let's get going. Um, what, like I said, one of the things about designing cards it's not all that easy sometimes. Sometimes you just struggle with it and you just try to put things together as best as you can. Um, this is what I started out with and I started to look at it and I'm like, that's really going to be kind of one dimensional, even though it's a 3D project. So this is the end product that I came up with. By putting a little bit of black in there, it really brings the rest of the colors out. <clears throat> okay, so, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> what you're gonna need today is, I used Flirty Flamingo for the base of the purse, and Mint, Mint I'm thinking, I don't know, is that Pool Party? Oh, sorry. Yep, yep, Mint Macar, I used Mint Macaroon for the, um, the green, and then basic black. Um, three very simple colors, and um, um, but a lot of die cutting, that's for sure. One of the things that um, you're gonna need um, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of uh, Flirty Flamingo, because this die is gonna take up about, you need two of these, and it's gonna take up about a half a sheet of, um, of cardstock. So um, this is this is what you come out with. No, that goes like that, okay. And then it comes with all this stitching, which I think is fabulous, and all the um, uh, score lines are in there. Now, one of the things I found is because the cardstock is pretty thick, I was having a problem being able to actually bend it on the. Um, score line that was provided. So what I did is I took a ruler and a metal ruler would probably be better because it's a little bit thinner than a plastic ruler. But what I did is I just put my ruler up to that um, score line and fo I folded it back to the, I, I folded it to the front. This is going to be folded to the back, to the inside. But I wanted to get it going and I wanted to be able to see where that score line was. By doing that, I was able to get closer to the actual score line um, that is provided. That was on the big side. And then <clears throat> you're going to fold all these score lines and um, and it's going to, this purse is, is um, capable of doing two things. It can be out like that and more like a I don't know what you would call it a bag and this would be more like a purse and um, I have also seen them doing this setting it up as a uh, backpack so it's a very versatile die 
Oops, don't want to use that. Again, I'm using my my ruler to try and get right on that score line so that because what was happening, I was getting into the stitched area and you don't want to um you don't want to that that's so pretty, you don't want to um oh, block that out of the way. So Okay, and then you've got this one last score line, and then it does go down. All you have to do is score it down to that point, and then those will fold naturally all by themselves. I don't know why, but that's just the way it's been. And this score is going to go in toward the inside of the purse. And again, I only, I only use my bone folder down to that where that point is there. Okay, now what you're going to do is, um, I was debating on this. I used score tape to go along these two, pa these two little panels here. Okay, and let me get my snips out here. And I used score tape for this. There's some cardstock on there. Sorry about that. Okay, and I'm just going to, the score tape is a, I mean the um, tear and tape is a little bit wider than this little panel. So what you're going to have to do is just, um, after you take the tape off, the, uh, the backing tape off, then just fold that, that, um, tape back on itself it's not going to be it's not going to hinder anything that's going on okay and basically everything else for this purse i used were scraps so um you're not not wasting too much paper on this project cut off that out of here and then I just kind of push down on the on the uh, tape just to make sure that it's it's pretty well um, sealed there and then I take my take your pick tool and I just take this tape off and then as you can see there's some tape that's hanging over and I just take my finger and roll it back on itself and it's not going to make any difference to um, the, um, the, the, the um, seam. And then you take, see these two dips? That is the top of your purse. And then make sure that this handle that's coming up here is lined up with that, the top of that tab. All right, and just make sure that you're lined up down here at the bottom so that these score lines are pretty well even and then I just take my bone folder and make sure that that's pretty well down there now I'm not gonna I'm not going to attach this one yet because what I want to do is I want to get these dies done and put them on here because you're coming out with a long die and you're gonna have to cut it off so it's better to be able to cut it off when it's not together. I did it both ways and I think this way is gonna be a little bit easier. Again, um, through the magic of camera, um, I've already done one of these and what I did is I used Mint Macaroon and Basic Black. Let's get that apart. And I, first you have to get them on the same page. And what I did is I just offset them to give it a shadow effect, okay? I, I just love that, um, like you said, that black just sets everything off. Here's one that's already, already glued, and I preferred it down this way because it, I end up getting, I, I want this little leaf here, I ended up cutting it up here, and I think it's cut right about there. So what I do is, I, I held it up against the panel because this is the panel. You're not going to be able to do it in here because that's going to bend and I, this is not going to end up looking very nice um, with that. 
So what I did is I looked at this and I wanted to make sure that that little leaf was on the panel and then what it'll end up doing is cutting off right around here. So you're just going to turn this over and we're going to put some glue from here over to where this leaf, see the leaf there? We're going to come over to that. And you just, and you don't need a lot of glue. I mean, it, it really, this is, this is awesome glue. It's our liquid glue, multi-purpose liquid glue. And it really hangs on quite nicely to everything. Um, you know, and you can use any glue that you, that you, well, if you like something better, um, use that by all means. There's another way you can do this, but I, I'm just, it's too messy for me. <laughs> so I hope everybody's enjoying their quarantine or they're getting, you know, things done while they're in quarantine. So, all right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this over and we're going to get to the front panel. And I'm going to kind of raise this up, okay? And I want, I want these to be down toward the bottom of the purse. And just move it over. That's one of the things about this glue. It allows you to move things around until you're ready to push it down and get it in place. Okay, now, I may have done things a little bit backward here, but I'm going to let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to show you how this, now this I glue the entire thing together. Um, just because you might be able to use some of these pieces somewhere else. Okay, so I'm going to take my glue on the back of the uh, mint macaroon. And remember, you're, you're offsetting this slightly, so you don't want to go all the way to the edges because then you'll, you'll have glue that's, that you do not want to um, want it to be touching or um, you know attaching where you don't want it to attach. So be a little careful with that. And again, it doesn't take a lot of glue. And I will just kind of aim myself toward the, the matching pattern on the black, the basic black cutout. Again, I didn't want you to have to sit there and watch me um, clean my dies and everything to get this done. Um, one of the things I found, now this is with my die cutting machine, is that, and it's a big shot, but they're all calibrated differently, is that when I have a, a pretty delicate um, pattern like this, I use a shim or an extra sheet of paper cardstock underneath my, um, my die cutting pads because then I don't have to do so much punching out of pieces because these are these are very delicate and they are really pretty hard to get everything to come out on a first try. So just a little tip for you. Okay, we'll put that on the side. And this is probably dry enough now that all you have to do is turn this over and what you're gonna do is take your snips, your paper snips, and go along the edge, making sure not to cut on the uh, the flirty flamingo sheet. And we're just going to cut that off. A little bit more there. Yeah. Okay. And then we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. that done. How cute that is. 
And now we're going to glue this to the other side. And again, I'm going to do I'm going to glue in the same spot. See, I really want that leaf over here, and then you're going to come halfway across this flower. So I always put my thumb in the area that I'm going to, and where'd my glue go? There it is. Amazing how fast things can get lost on your table. Okay, so here we go. Now this you can go to the edge because you're you're going onto a full sheet of paper here um, on the uh, on the purse. So. If you, one of the things about the blog hop is um, uh, there are several of us that are doing this, all coming up with different wonderful ideas, and it gives us a chance to collaborate with each other and, um, and challenge each other as to what we can come up with um, on our, pro our projects. So we're just going to kind of fold this in half, turn it over first. <laughs> And I'm, I'm gearing off of this leaf down here. That's, that's what my primary subject is. And then I'm just coming down closer to that stitching area. And, and you can still slide it around a little bit. And then just press it down and let that set for a second. Okay, now, sorry, it's a little dry here today. And next, I'm just gonna let, set that aside and let that dry just a teeny bit before we cut it. Now, I have also used the Label Me Lovely Punch and the Label Me Fancy Punch. And, um, oops, yeah, where's my black cardstock? I guess I didn't get any cards, black cardstock. Sorry about that, because I need more black cardstock. Um, the, um, I'm using the Label Me Fancy Punch for the sentiment, okay? And I'm using the Label Me Lovely Punch for the background. Now, what I also did was, with the basic black, I punched another one of these, of each of these labels out. And I cut it in half, and that's how you get that um, frame around there. And I'll show you exactly. It's a great tip if you don't have, you know, because a lot of times we don't have, you know, two of these, so that one is larger than the other. So by cutting it in half and sliding it up a little bit, you can put some put more dimension into your project or to your labels or anything else that you're working on. So we're gonna just turn this over and get a label cut out here. And get the other label. I'm pretty sure this is the right, it's gonna fit in here. Come on. Get in there. Again, this is a scrap, so I'm just kind of moving it, trying to move it around with my fingers, and it's stuck. Darn it! Oh, okay, I got a little piece out here. I can think I can get it there. You know. Just remember, you can use your scraps for just about anything. So, all right, let me get a piece, a scrap of basic black. I forgot about the fact that I had these two labels. And that should be great. So we're going to do... Oh, and the other thing about this particular label, I mean, um, label punch, is that you have a slot here. That's for ribbon. And this is also a little hole for ribbon. So it's a great label um, punch. So now I'm going to do a black. And that is the... Label me fancy punch. It's hard to remember all these things. And then we're going to do one of the label me lovely punch. Okay. And we're 
we're done with those. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to, cause we're, we're um, there's, you know, you could put the, the uh, label up like this. I decided to go this way and I am just going to cut this label in half. And I'm going to cut the other black label in half. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and I want to I want to go up. I want the rounded edge up this way because what I wanted to do was try to soften these square edges at the top. So we're just going to take our multi-purpose liquid glue and we're going to glue the front of the black label that's cut in half. Try not to go too far up to the top because you want that to show. You don't want your glue oozing out um, from the top. So we're just going to center that as best we can. Okay. And then we're going to do the other half. and try to make sure that they are as even as possible on both sides. There you go. I'm just gonna press that down a little bit. Get that glue to really set. There you go. And then what I'm gonna do, using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, I am going to use the sentiment, thank you for being my friend and again, that is from the Here's a Card stamp set. Um, all the dimensions and everything will be on my blog, and uh, there will be links directly to the products if you decide to order them. Now, if you see this, this is our, um, uh, these are our, what do you call them? Our cling stamp sets. And they come with labels that we have to attach. And um, sometimes the labels don't go on perfectly straight. So what I try to do is I do a little stamp. I stamp it first on a scratch piece of paper to make sure that I'm getting it straight. Um, I had to do a couple of tries and I did this, I made this yesterday so I don't remember exactly how far off I, <laughs> I was on the um, straightness of this. So let me see what happens on the, yeah, so see I'm a little angled down, but the label looks straight and it's not. So we have to bring it up. And that's too much. Okay, for a third time. Third time's a charm. That's what they say. Got it. Okay, I think I can do it. And thank God there's two sides to a label. Okay. It's kind of hard when you're not right over it. Oh, crap. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to swear. We're going to have to use the other side. <laughs> it was straight, just not inked enough. Okay, let's try this again. Good, got it, going for it. Okay, that's all the ink you need on this one. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our um, black label and attach that to our sentiment. Again, you're um, putting glue on the front half and try not to get it all the way to the top because you, again, you do not want your glue to ooze out. And just play around with it until you're happy with it. Looks good. Press it down a little bit. This glue sets up pretty fast. Okay, now we're gonna do the bottom half. Looking pretty 
looked good. Okay. So, the other thing that I did was, uh, through the magic of video, um, I used this to make the straps. Now, what I did is I made a black and a flirty flamingo. I just didn't want a plain just flirty flamingo. I think this really kind of sets it off and I made sure that it was offset so that the black, I wanted the black on the outside. So I've already glued this one together and I'll go ahead and glue this together. And what I, and remember there's a, there's a, there's two sides to this paper. And when you're um, cutting this out, this, this stitching is going to, you really want that. It's very pretty. And one of the things I found was um, I was better at gluing on the flirty flamingo and then attaching it to the black. I tried it both ways. And, and again, you have to remember that you're offsetting it. So you don't want the glue to go all the way to the edge. So I'm just doing it on the back of the flirty flamingo piece down toward one side. I did not do the whole thing. And then you're going to take it up to your basic black and offset it. And make sure that they're even. And that looks pretty good as an offset. And now we're just going to gently make sure that's all attached. Let that dry a bit. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then we'll come back to that. So, what we're going to do is we are going to use our Stampin' Dimensionals to get this up. Oop, that, those are the minis. Here, my Stampin' Dimensionals. Okay, and I'm just going to use two on this. And take your tool to get the paper backing off. Okay. And remember I want I want this curved edge at the top. Okay, so your sentiment is Oh, you know what I'm going to do first? Because one, one of the other things I did is I put Wink Stella on here. And where it is? There it is. Um, I also put it on the green, the mint macaroon label. And I did it after I attached this. This was an afterthought. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put that on the green while I, so I, I'm not hindered by um, my sentiment label. You're also going to need a piece of scrap scrap paper and you need to shake your wink Stella and then you push and I usually get some out on the paper and it's not gonna work right now of course not so we're just gonna do it from the pen and oh there we go and you probably want to put this on a piece of scrap paper and then just rub it on and if you get some on the black it's no big deal it looks nice this is, and you're, you're not going to see this as much as I can see it, but I like to empty, I like to get it onto my paper, um, separate paper, uh, scrap paper, because I just seem to be able to control the amount that's coming out. I don't want a big glob coming out like that kind of did down there. It's just my preference. You can do it any way you want to do it. No rules and regulations here. I think I'm gonna get a, have to get a new Wink Stella. I'm almost out here. I love that. Okay, and we're also gonna put it on our um, flowers. 
let that dry a little bit. We're going to come back, and now this is dried. See, everything has to, you have, sometimes you have to give it a little time to, to dry and set up before you do certain things. And we'll come back and grab that. Cut that off. Again, remembering not, try not to cut your, your uh, base card, your purse. Okay, so there you got that. Now let's go ahead and do these, these with the Wink Stella. Yes, it's getting to be a mess here. Please don't tell me. I'm running out of Wink of Stella. Stella! I wonder if I think I have another one. If not, you get the idea. <laughs> Come on, Stella. Help me out here. At least I'll get the front done. And I did both sides, so. I know, should have been more prepared, but stamping does that to you. Okay, there we go. All right, and like I said, do both sides. I, like I said, I was not prepared for that to run out right now. Now, what I'm going to do, this has dried a little bit. Yep, it has. All right, we can go ahead and put our sentiment on. Again, remembering that we've got the curved edge toward the top. And um, we want to try and get this centered. So I'm looking at these flat edges over here to try and center this. And that's a little bit, yeah, well, that's way off. Okay. Okay, that looks uh, just a little bit over to the left. Now I'm way off. This is this is always the hardest part. Just trying to get things centered and straight. Okay, there we go. Now what we're gonna do is uh, did I put the handles on first? Yeah, let's go ahead and put the handles on. All right, the other thing we're gonna do is we're going to take our tear and tape. And what I do is I go across like this. And the reason I do that is so that I'm basically, it, it helps me gear um, on my measurement that it's gonna be the same on both sides. If I go this way, your, you know, your piece of tape is gonna be longer on one side than the other. Um, this gives me a guide to where to, um, I can put my handles on the purse. Just again, a little tip on, you know, because you want, you want things to be, um, what am I, uh, even. It's probably not the right word, but it's close enough. Again, using my tear and tape. Pushing those down, and okay. Now what we have to do here is now we can put this together. We can do the other side of the tear and tape. Pull that backing up, and we're going. This is a little awkward because it's going to look like wow, that shouldn't happen, um, and. Um, but it works out fine. Make sure, see this tab has got to be at the top. And like I said, this is a little awkward. And make sure that you're at the um, score line. Okay. Make sure you're going down. And remember, this is tear and tape, so this is pretty much when you get it down there, it's down there. There we go. Okay, and I'm gonna take my bone folder and just run across that to make sure that it's sealed. And it is. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to 
close this up and what you do here is now you figure out which which side you think is the better looking side and what you want is if this is your front you want this front flap to go toward the back on the outside because that, this doesn't go all the way to the other edge and it's just not going to look as finished as if you were um, if you if you did it the other way so what we're going to do now is put some liquid glue on the tabs and again this is going to be your back so this tab is going to go down first and make sure that they that the edges meet okay and then you're going to glue this front tab don't glue on here because the front tab remember the front tab is going to be shorter it's not going to reach all the way to the back so again make sure everything's squared up and then just press that down hold it for a couple seconds and then what I do is I take my bone folder and press on the inside make sure everything's sealed and there's there might be a little glue that oozes out from those little tabs so just try and clean your bone folder off um, so that you don't get that all over the place okay now we're gonna put the handles on and I'm gonna take all my scoring my uh, paper backing off my my uh, tear and tape off of all these handles okay and remember I, I wanted the black on the outside so just remember when you're putting these in that um, they're they're both going in the, the right direction because all right here's the other way and here's this way okay so now what I do is I make sure that that tear and tape is just below the top of that tab and that way you will be able to get handles that are pretty much the same length okay oops and the other thing to do is take your bone folder and just gently round that out let me do that to this this one too just like curling ribbon okay just to give it some roundness and there's some dog hair <laughs> surprise surprise and again I just make sure that that tear and tape is below the um, the tab so that you don't see it and now we'll do the other side I mean, and I do double check to, to make sure that they're pretty close in size. And that looks pretty darn good. Just push it over. Okay. And now we're going to attach our sentiment. And we're going to put some more dimensionals on here. And again, the top of your sentiment is going to be above here, so you don't want the dimensional all the way to the top. It's okay on the bottom, but not on the top. And my handy dandy, whoops, got some glue on there. Probably one of my favorite products is my Take Your Pick tool. It does just about everything. Okay, come on. Okay, so now to center this, 
our sentiment. And I wanted it up a little bit. I'm trying to, the second hump is basically what I'm trying to aim for them being at the same spot on the handle portion. There you go. Okay, now the last thing we're going to be using are these, uh, these are called uh, Gilded Gems. And we're going to, I use the small ones. I always use an odd number. Um, an odd number is just aesthetically pleasing. And that's just a de design tip for everyone. So, there you go. Isn't that adorable? I, who wouldn't want to get that? Okay? I just love that. Um, remember, this is a blog hop, and I will have all the other people that are... Um, uh, joining in the blog hop their links will be below and please go over and check out their blogs please like and share um, their their uh, video please subscribe to their channel it would be so greatly appreciated and I hope you have a great day um, thank you for um, taking time out of your busy schedule to uh, join us and I hope you have a wonderful week thanks bye bye